Welcome to episode 293 of the Helping with HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSP and Security First IT, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Carden. I just realized, Donna, I'm talking too fast again. <laughs> yeah, they did notice that you were crying for a tiny little time amount of time. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I can't do it. If I if I if I don't talk fast, my brain will outrun me. <laughs> <laughs> I had to keep going. And you know, everybody uh, says that Southerners talk slow. Yeah, I, I know some like that. And I don't talk as fast as some. I guess I'm somewhere in the middle. But yeah, I probably talk faster than I should. So between talking fast and then talking about what our podcast covers, all of those little transcribe automated transcription tools are like, who are you and what? language are you speaking well you know i've got five kids so there's seven people that used to live in this house <laughs> which means if you had anything to say you had to be quick about it <laughs> <laughs> well you know there, there's some habits you have to learn to break i guess but uh i got many other things i need to work on before i work on that <laughs> yes <laughs> all right so the hippo boot camp um, as you're listening to this, the, the, uh, spring session that one we call it spring session is over February is spring. Win winter session. I don't know. Anyway, the February session is over <laughs> the August session, however, is open and ready for you to sign up. Yes. So that would be, uh, August 17, 18, 19. We're doing virtual edition again because it works. Yeah. But we we we, we got to see what we do in 2022. But for 2021, <laughs> that's it. That's I it. Like, that's all. I like doing. that rhyme. We got to see what we do in 2022. <laughs> yep. We're making new ads. That's it. Yep. But uh, we we're gonna go ahead and do virtual edition again in August. I mean, we we getting this thing figured out now, though. So I think people are really starting to like it. Yeah. It, but uh. Yep. So if you want to know more information about that, go to the hippabootcamp.com. All of the information will be there, including the early bird special. So certainly good idea to go ahead and get in there quickly. August 17th through the 19th. Mm -hmm. Join us. Sure enough. Going to be fun. Yeah, it always is. All righty. And just a reminder, make sure you share out today's podcast. And if you enjoyed it, like I know you will, go give us a five-star review. We appreciate your support. Yeah, we need to we need you to share it. We need to drive up that listenership. Just it's a it's a little bit. Yep. Yep. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're so close to meeting some goals. So you know, anything you can do to help a sister out <laughs> and the dude that hangs out with her. Uh <laughs> please do so. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All righty, so uh, let's take a short break, and then we'll get back to the Hippo Say What segment. And um, by the way, we're talking about supply chain uh, cyber threats. Getting getting real. Let's get real up in here. Ready for the Hippo Say What segment? Say what? All right. So first of all, um, we do want to cover a a news story, and I think you had a question come in. Well, well we, I found a question that somehow we missed, but, you know, yeah, we're going to have to fire our administrative assistant, which is me, um, because I missed a whole question that was like from November. Stumbled oh upon it. Well, so, at least you can stumble upon it. Yeah. I can't even stumble upon stuff. If I miss it, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> It, well, you know, it, it went into the proper file. I just hadn't found the file. All right. But, so let's find out what it is. Yeah. Yes. So, and it, it's an anonymous question that said, can I file a complaint with OCR if I am not a patient, but I live in the same state with a doctor that is in the news? A uh, complaint would be that not properly advising patients with the COVID risk per the CDC and state health authority, national Institute of blah, 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 all the guides 
because there's a local news story about a doctor and the staff who they themselves refuse to wear masks during the pandemic and are telling their patients that it's nothing more than the common cold. Hmm. That's and, interesting. Yeah. For the physician's office to do it. Uh, no wonder people are confused. So, um, but the, uh, uh, there's two answers really to this question. Believe it or not, there are two answers. <laughs> um, first, if you see a news story and you feel that OCR should be aware of it, you can file a complaint that says, if this is really happening, I would like for it to be, a, you know, looked into, you know, to see if this is really happening. And you know, when we, hear them speak and uh, talk with them. They watch the news, right? And so it's not uncommon for them to notice something on the news and make a little note that says, I should be seeing a report from these these folks and, and watch for it to happen. And then, you know, look into it. So from that perspective, yes, something in the news, you could file it. Uh, but this particular complaint wouldn't it's it doesn't fall under privacy rights uh it would fall under um more of a treatment kind of situation and the type of treatment uh that would be better served by going to your state medical boards and uh i included a list from the federation of state medical boards in the show notes but if you're seeing something that is concerning to you about public health due to what's being talked about, you can certainly file the complaint with the medical boards. That's where I'd start anyway. Okay. And or public health or wherever. But yes, you can bring up a news story in uh, the privacy rights to uh, OCR via the reporting platform. So there you go. So right. I am sorry for the anonymous person that <laughs> somehow uh, I shut down <laughs> and did not process this question. Are you sure it wasn't Carla? Uh, I am sure because, <laughs> because the next one was Carla. The next one was, uh, <laughs> she, she's good about being anonymous. <laughs> no, she tries. So, yeah, for those of you who, who may be new to the podcast, Long, long ago, when we started this thing, <laughs> like we got like our first listener question and I was so excited. <laughs> it was like, we got a listener question. And then I find out it's Carla using some fake name. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, I was uh, so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Mary <laughs> right. from Milwaukee. She would always say something. <laughs> yeah. She would, you know, rhyme the place or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we were like, you don't have to do that. That gets David too excited. I know. Mess me all up. <laughs> now we get listener questions like without having to wait for Carla to send them in. So, but that was in the beginning, our very first one. And yes, that was so funny for me to see David so excited and knowing I was about to pop that balloon. <laughs> Just let me right. You enjoyed it. You like, let me run on and on with it. I did. I did. <laughs> Just holding my needle. <laughs> <laughs> wait for the moment see, see how i get treated Just no yeah. respect oh yeah right the same that you give out brother <laughs> all right so the next one was one that came in we had a client that called in with this one and i love that our clients are you know they're like you know what i i know when i'm supposed to call and ask for help and that's what they count on us for and uh, this is one of our ones we talk to regularly. So we're actively involved in their program. And so apparently a patient filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. And you never know where these things are going to come from. We hear the stories about it happening on Yelp. We hear it about everywhere. Well, one of those places is the Better Business Bureau. And uh, our, they get the call from the Better Business Bureau who wants to investigate the claim. Right. Mm -hmm. And our client said, whoa, 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 let's call Carden. Because mm -hmm. we can't give them specifics about the patient, even though the patient gave specifics. 
to the Better Business Bureau. And I was like, you are absolutely right. I am so proud of you. Gold star for the day. <laughs> yeah. Way to go, Justin. So the question was, do we need the patient to sign an authorization to work with Better Business Bureau investigators? The answer is definitely yes. And um, the Better Business Bureau actually has on their website an authorization form for release of health information to work in an investigation. So that was easy. We just sent them the form and sent it back. But ironically, he had to send the form to the Better Business Bureau to tell them that they needed to have the patient for out their own form instead of the Better Business Bureau saying, um, you know, I, was we, you, I, I would file a complaint against the Better Business Bureau with heard. the Better Business Bureau. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I would with do. The Better Business Bureau about the Better Business. That's exactly what I do. Because, um, yeah. you know, I'm not a fan of the Better Business Bureau. I'm just saying. Right? We've talked about that. I've got no use for them. But that's just my personal opinion. Matters nothing yeah. to anyone. <laughs> but if, <laughs> indeed, if, uh, <laughs> No, they're not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> if they uh, had made the assumption that the Better Business Bureau wouldn't send them astray and that it would be okay or they would tell them, they would be in trouble, right? And you would think that they would, their own investigators would know about this form. They do not. You would think. So, you know, they're Maybe. not protecting you from violating HIPAA. <laughs> What if OCR investigates your investigation <laughs> with BBB? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and that could happen. It could happen. It definitely could happen. So they did the right thing. We mm -hmm. got them with the form. They were able to go say, look, patient needs to fill out this form. And uh, yay, good for them for doing so. Yeah. My response would have been, good luck, Chuck. <laughs> and cooperate with you or anything that you have. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see that now. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, I have my own reasons. <laughs> All right. Go down that rabbit hole. We shall not go down that rabbit hole. The spider hole. So <laughs> <laughs> <It's a> funnel <laughs> weaver. <laughs> For those of you in the South, I don't know. I don't know where those things are, but they're crazy looking spiders and they come flying out of the holes. <laughs> They're nasty. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that brings us to the OCR. Speaking of spider webs, they caught somebody else in their web. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is uh, the 15th. I had to quick go update uh, uh, some presentations I'm about to give because I said 14. Mm -hmm. Let's quick throw 15 in there. Uh, the 15th uh, right of access initiative resolution agreement another settlement another one now this is the first one under the acting ocr director robin so frobius frobezi frobos i don't know how it's pronounced i'm, I'm glad you tried those frobezi i don't know which one yeah we'll, i'm sure we'll learn i was like hopefully we'll hear somebody pronounce it and I we can know, right. I, I'm sure at some point I did and didn't pay attention. Fro boys, fro, fro boys. I don't know. It's pro probos or fro BC. I don't know. Pro B, pro. Anyway, <laughs> for those Somebody. of you who know how to pronounce it, please send us an email so we don't go through this conversation the next time there's an announcement. Yeah, they're going to send you an email, and this uh, in, in the email is just me typed out. It's pronounced, and they're just going to type the name. Oh, I, I, okay, that helps. <laughs> uh, we, we know what you're talking about. Okay, so uh, uh, this one is Renowned Health in Nevada. Not Nevada. Nevada. Oh. It's not a bomb. It's a vad. I don't know. It depends on who you talk to, but Nevada, Colorado, all of those. <laughs> all right, so uh, same problem taking months to get patient records directed where they wanted in the format they asked for in full. Mm -hmm. So apparently the patient made a request in January, 2019. Mm -hmm. And 
apparently all of the records, some of the records must have been sent, but the final, like, complete record didn't arrive until December 27th, 2019. A year. Mm. So apparently some records were provided along the way, but there was a problem with getting everything they wanted. Uh, there's not a whole lot of detail in there, but uh, still, a year? A year. It's, I don't care what you say. The, the, unless there's a true exception, why is it taking a year? Yeah, you can only do that in 2020. <laughs> and even then, that didn't work out. Now, did it? No, it did not. I'm so, sure we're going to have the 16th one will be a 2020 issue. Yeah. Um, so, and the director, the obligatory director's quote. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, access to one's health records is an essential HIPAA right. And healthcare providers have a legal obligation to their patients to provide access to their health information on a timely basis. Indeed. So, so if they're that bad at it, <laughs> it makes you wonder. We, we just talked about they want to change it to 15 days. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it almost goes back to why am I going to make it harder if I can't even get them to do it, you know, the way they're supposed to. But um, I don't know. The, the thing is, is that this is also part of the 21st Century Cures Act and that whole information blocking thing. And, you know, it's getting bigger uh, and, and more reasons that you're supposed to provide these things mm-hmm. to allow the patients to be more engaged and uh, so on and so forth. Whatever the reason the patient wants it, it's your job to meet those needs as long as they are within the legal boundaries of what's to be released. Yeah. Don't give them to the BBB. No, not without <laughs> authorization. <laughs> so um, how much did this call for a noun? $75,000 plus a two year corrective action plan. Mm. So that means you're being monitored. You know, I saw somewhere that the corrective action plan was called a uh, monitoring program which may be a better way to state it. I think we'll start restating it. The CAP Corrective Action Plan Monitoring Program. Uh, because the corrective that, action that's essentially monitoring. what it is. Hey, the Corrective Action Monitoring Program. It's a camp. You get to go to I camp. Get, our CAP, <laughs> our CAP camp. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and OCR would be the camp counselors. Ah, the <laughs> Bump, we can make a little like, uh, you know, a wood uh, a fire campfire symbol for it, and everybody yeah. gathered around. I know yeah, it's, it's called making lemonade <laughs> when you get lemons. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, so there's our HIPAA say what? Say, say oh, what? I don't know. There you go. There you go. This segment makes sure that we, if we can, we're going to cover at least something to do with HIPAA in every episode, specific questions and details. Mm -hmm. Because the next part kind of ventures everywhere, but cybersecurity falls, uh, well, everywhere today. Yeah. Well, one thing that we we make a point, and we've we've been making a point of this for a long time, Cybersecurity is everybody's responsibility. We yeah. talk about that continuously, um, but everybody's not getting it. And it's going to be a while before they do, I believe, yeah. because we still hear people go, I don't have anything anybody wants. I don't have important information, blah, blah, blah. And they don't see the bigger picture of connected relationships and stuff like that. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah, you might not be that important, but you might know somebody three steps down that is. Well, and your equipment can be used for somebody to attack somebody that's important right? and to host and distribute those attacks and blah, Mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, you know, I know that if I know something about Donna, at some point I can get to Kevin Bacon. Just saying. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, supply chain news. Um, Yeah. So we talked about 
we've talked about solar winds uh, a little and, bit, a little and, bit. Yeah. And, and there's still more coming out of that. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to even think about what to talk about because there's so much coming out. <laughs> yeah. I was overwhelmed when I sat down and, you know, the six, just in this household alone, I think we've had three or four notifications of breaches that happened the no de November, December timeframe. Cause the, you know, the 60 day clock, which a, another message people aren't getting is without delay, they're waiting the 60 days to send that letter out, trying to make it be as far away from the event as possible. Yeah. And, you know, so those are coming out and there were a lot of hits. Um, yeah. We're seeing a ton of that. We saw there's somebody, uh, uh, healthcare targets, big data dump from healthcare targets, uh, more ransomware stuff. But the thing that I kept coming back to is the water supply hack. Mm. You know, when that came out, I'm like, oh, this is getting real. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, it's getting real. Yeah. I saw this. I don't know if I sent it to you before you uh, saw it in your own feeds, but it was one yeah, of those I things where I, like I couldn't share it fast enough. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, because part yeah. of it, part of me is uh, okay, the danger aspect of it, even though I do assume that there's probably other checks and balances along the way. Um, but I was, look, I was wanting to know how did this happen? Was it, it was an attack through an IT company they had? Of course, you know, I wanted that, <laughs> you know, was it bad cyber hygiene? Was it a true hack or, you know, how did I get in? I want to know all those things. You know, how does it happen is, is what I'm really looking at. Especially when you look at solar winds. So we haven't talked a ton about solar winds. Mostly because that thing is very sophisticated, very complex. And I mean, there's a reason that everything, apparently everybody's saying, <clears throat> everybody, not just everybody's saying, all the people that know this kind of stuff, like intelligence people and, you know, government security people, this was done by the Russian uh, hacker collective that works for the nation state. So they have a lot of money and they have very complex stuff. So this is one of those things where, you know, you know, now I think they've came out with three different names of different malware or vulnerabilities that were used. So of course, because solar winds is involved, we got to have some sort of theme. <laughs> you know, sunspot, sunburst, supernova, all these kind of things were all part of it. And solar winds is maintaining an advisory FAQ. And it, you know, at least it appears that as soon as they know something, they are sharing it <clears throat> if it's something they can share. Mm -hmm. right? You know, they're sharing it with authorities may or may not share it with all of us, but as soon as they can, it's coming out. It's been very transparent. So I'm glad to see that. And there are a ton of places that have been hit. Mm -hmm. And I thought Krebs on security, the recent article, the heading of it was so telling solar winds, what hit us could hit others. You know, don't sit back and go, boy, I'm glad it happened to you. Not me. <laughs> Right. You should, you should be going, uh, uh, I got to make sure that doesn't happen to me. I mm -hmm. got to do everything I can to make sure that, cause you know what the bad guys do? I mean, come on. You know, yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of like a horse playing horse, you know, the commercial, uh, where the guy accidentally falls in the bush. <laughs> and, you know, who was the two that were doing that? They falls in the bush. No, I meant to do it. So you got to shoot that way. And then they keep doing all the weird stuff, but you always try to outdo the other ones. Yeah. Right. I'm always going to outdo the other ones. And let me tell you something in the hacker world, being able to outdo the other ones, mm -hmm. somebody else is going to do this and do it better. And this was huge. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> um, yeah. People just don't know. They don't know. 
no. you know. Yeah. And, and well, what you don't get is that this thing is kind of like the vendor of your vendor's vendor. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it. supply chain all the way. And, and this is something we've been talking about, gosh, what is three, four years now? You know, supply chain is going to be a problem. Supply chain is going to be a problem. Um, and it's been a problem in the past, but do they are stepping it up. I mean, it, it's the easy way in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. look at the attacks on the MSPs and the attacks on, and, and they're going after the software companies and every software company that we advise now, I'm taking them through the NIST secure software framework, yeah, uh, SSDF and, and OWASP and all these other things, because I know you hired me to help you with HIPAA management, but you need to be doing this. Mm -hmm. It falls under my purview uh, just because, uh, uh, I like getting nerdy with it. Well, so many, so many large organizations are doing business with the smaller companies out there for different things. It's all over the place. And so why try to attack the big company directly with all the stuff they have in place to, to try to prevent that when I can mm -hmm. just attack this little small company who's not doing anything. Right. Right. And then just, just follow it right on in. It makes complete sense, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, you know, the classic, when you watch all of the, the movies about the thieves and all of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, you know, or people breaking out of jail, but they're using like the laundry, they're going out dressed as the, you know, a police officer They're you know, it's yeah. all these kinds of things because why not yeah, be it's like one of the things that you, you know, I always used to joke that as the IT person, I could walk into an office and as long as you looked like, you know, you, you work for IT, mm -hmm. generally the polo shirt with a tech logo on it, um, you know, a laptop or something. And I could walk into any office, no one know me, sit down at a desk ask whose desk it was and ask for their password and people would give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. You know, and, but it, you know, it's the same concept now that they're using that concept because everybody trusts the software's okay. Yeah. Everybody trusts that somebody else is taking care of it. That kind of reminds me of a time we had an office building and every, um, I think it was every three months, this uh, guy was contracted to come in and check like the, um, the emergency lighting units and the exit signs and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and, and we had just moved into that building and it, I guess we'd been there maybe a month and a half or two. This guy comes walking in, you know, with his little ladder and he bebops just past everybody and does his little thing. And I walked over to him. I said, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm checking the light. No, sir. You're not checking the light. I need to know who you are, what you're doing here until then get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Oh, excuse me. Uh, but that's just it. People like, Oh yeah. As long as you act like you're supposed to be there, most people aren't going to confront you. Mm -hmm. I, I have had so many and supply chain it's the tiny things like I had a, a mentor and we're talking well into the last century. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I had a mentor that, uh, was a developer and he taught me so many awesome things. And because of the time I came along, I never worked with punch cards, but all of the people that mentored me and taught me, they had all worked with punch cards, right? So they would all tell all the stories about the punch card world. I remember the electric bill being a punch card and the phone bill being a punch card. Cause if you mm. wanted to get attention, you just poked a hole in it, you know, <laughs> uh, something like that. <laughs> but he would tell a story that uh, he worked at a bank. Cause you know, the banks were the ones that had the computers and more than anybody else in the beginning. And of course, 
they were always in the basement because computers were huge <laughs> and uh, all that kind of stuff. And every month for the last couple of months, they'd be out of balance by a weird amount at the end of the month. And so it happened again the, this third month in a row. And the bank president's down in the basement yelling at the IT director, you've got to figure out why we're out of balance. No one leaves this room until we, you know, just going nuts because, you know, every month it's a different amount and mm -hmm. it's a little here and a little there. It's weird. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less. Couldn't figure out what was going on. They're all stressing out. They're about to all be fired. They're there just, you know, been there, done that. They're there all day, well into the night. And they're just, you know, to the point where, you know, it's that thing where the when you work in our world, you get to know the cleaning people. They started teaching me Spanish and stuff, right? <laughs> they, I, they would teach me Spanish. And a few little Spanish words I know was from, como esta? <laughs> you know, they would come in and I'd like, uh, bien, muy bien, usted. You know, that was, <laughs> it was the cleaning people. And um, so they had the cleaning people coming in. They're all sweating it out. And one of the guys is just laying over looking at code. And as he's staring, he sees the cleaning people come around. They're sweeping. And they pick up and pull a card out of the punch pile. Sweep it up like a dustpan and throw it away. Uh. <laughs> Original supply chain failure right there. Yeah. And they're like, well, how often do you do that? Well, whenever I'm the one sweeping the floor and just get a random card sweep. And I didn't know where to put it back. So I just threw it away. <laughs> they didn't know what those cards were. It was, you know, I, I grew up that way. You find, find a letter or something. And if you don't have a dustpan. So uh, that's what it was. See, that's where I learned. Look for the odd. Mm -hmm. When it's odd, look for the odd. That is the original supply chain problem. And those problems still exist today. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was one of those moments where uh, clearly it's something I learned from and paid attention to. And it's why I now can sit there and go, something else could be impacting us. What is it? Yeah. You know, and that's your supply chain. And uh, so that's why the, the solar winds thing, very complex. And I can't find a way to talk about it, which is not uber nerdy. Mm -hmm. But just to mention it on our podcast and, and be aware of it, uh, I'm not going to try to share all those details with people. But the water supply one? Yeah, this one. Yeah, you know, and this, this one's one... just like that, the, the sweep with the punch cards. That's what... That's what the water supply one is. Yeah. Yeah. For me, this, this story went from um, kind of scary to kind of ridiculous. Uh -huh. Like seriously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I knew one of the articles I read early on, uh, the guy was saying that the, the PR press person was at answering questions and somebody said, but well, did you have two FA on this, on the team viewer? Because team viewer was used. Yeah. Nothing. No answer. Next question, please. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. We're on to yeah. something here. <laughs> yeah. Answer number one, not an answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, it sounds to me like HIPAA was, uh, not HIPAA, but security wasn't important. Um, and yeah. of course, more has come out since then. So let's talk about the supply chain, uh, water supply thing <laughs> that happened down in Florida. Yeah. I, I Anybody could have pulled this one off, really. I mean, apparently it was... Uh, it's ridiculous, but um, so I think it's I think it's funny uh, in a lot of ways and terrifying in others. Yeah. And uh, although I have to say, if you haven't seen, it came out this week the uh, lawyer who is stuck on the cat. <laughs> I haven't seen. I heard about it. I hadn't seen oh it. Oh my though. god! Uh, I I have seen it like a thousand times, and I can't stop laughing. I anyway keep, i keep going where do they do this because i keep hearing this is 
a, a Zoom thing. And I'm like, I can't find cat faces on Zoom. Everybody's Where looking for it. Everybody's looking for it. it <laughs> apparently somebody did something special for him. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. I'll have to play it for you in a minute. Uh, and uh, It's hysterical. It's one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. Uh, <laughs> it helped relieve so much stress because I laughed so hard I couldn't breathe. Uh, <laughs> but um, with this one, uh, the, the interesting thing is most of the time these things happen, you don't hear about them, right? You, you don't hear about them. Yeah, which is the crazy part. It, yeah. You know, it's like when you do hear about it's even in healthcare breaches, right? When you mm -hmm. hear about them, mm -hmm. you can multiply that by, I don't even know, some yeah. say 10x, some say 100x. I'm thinking more 100x, but <laughs> yeah, because it's a how many that really happen, right? Yeah. It's just most of the time is self reporting. And so, you know, how many times does it get sweep, swept under the rug? Personally, I see a lot of times he gets swept under the rug. So I know that it's yeah. happening a lot more than being reported. Yeah. We can only do so much, uh, but this was actually, and, and I'm sure somebody somewhere had a fit about this, mm -hmm. but when these things happen, you're supposed to notify authorities. That is the correct thing to do. True. They notified the Pinellas County Sheriff's department and the sheriff held a press conference about it. Yep. And in that, the sheriff said, you know, explained that it happened on Friday. An operator noticed the intrusion, watched the hacker access the system remotely. So you knew right away, remote desktop, right? Some mm -hmm. sort of remote access. Right. And that they adjusted the level of sodium hydroxide to more than 100 times its normal levels. The operator watched him do it and then when the attacker left when the attacker quit then they <laughs> set it back to where it belonged uh so um, at no time was there a significant adverse effect to the city's water supply the public was never in danger right okay yes there are checks and balances but this was a very simple attempt. If it was a really serious attempt, they would have been after the checks and balances as well. So just know that they're mm -hmm. counting on the fact. I I don't think anybody should get confident that oh well the checks and balances would have prevented it because no, that's not going to happen. Uh, right. But then in, in another statement, uh, the it really shows how they do not understand what we know is really happening back to the 10 times, hundred times. Mm -hmm. uh, so the sheriff said the potential danger of an attack like this should prompt a discussion about remote access to software, adding that he had never seen an attack like this quote. This is a new one for us. Blink, blink. <laughs> yeah i'm like uh you're not I, paying attention <laughs> i mean how many times we're like do not use rdp we've been preaching about that for a long time you have to have these things secured because these attacks are so they're like the number one way to attack yet the sheriff's saying never say anything like it mm -hmm. so that that tells you how we still have to educate yeah. Get people to understand that. Yeah. People like you and me are like, oh, we're seeing this happen all the time. <laughs> and he's like, I ain't never say don't do this. You know, right away, we'd be like, team viewer, you know, and the thing is, team viewer didn't do anything wrong. No, that's the, you know, the first thing to come out is like, oh, this was, you know, they use team viewer and people run into team viewer going, were you hacked? And I'm like, mm, mm, even yeah. me, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm cheaply cynical. At the, yeah, I'm cynical. I, I'm still going, wait a minute. Because I know um, we don't use TeamViewer, but we have used TeamViewer. Yeah. Uh, but I know that it's typically a user issue mm -hmm. when somebody's using your TeamViewer account. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to start looking there, and and the fact that they, I mean, there are just too many. The simplicity of the statement. One thing I I did I don't know if you read it, but. Um, 
one of the articles I'd read about this, the guy, the operator, fortunately he was sitting there, but I know, right. One question I kind of had was why did he watch it happen? I I know. So, but what I figured out, well, what I'd learned, I didn't figure it out. I read in another article was that, um, there were certain people that would log in to the system from home supervisors and things like that. So having somebody logging in using team viewer was a commonplace thing. Right. And so it wasn't nothing new to him, but when yeah. somebody jacked up the settings, he's like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. But that's, again, that's a concern. If it's, if it's, um, a non-event for your mouse to just move around on its own people logging into your systems without you even knowing about it. If that's Mm -hmm. normal, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's a problem with, with process, you know, you just can't do that. You need to have some way to verify, look, Joe, I'm going to log into your machine in a little bit and check stuff out. So if you see the mouse moving around, you know, don't just assume don't assume because you see team viewer pop up oh. that it's somebody that normally is using team viewer. Well, but not only that, but the Tampa Bay times reported that it happened earlier in the day. Mm. That the same person saw somebody come in at 8 AM on Friday morning. Yep. Saw them briefly in there and figured, uh, you know, so, I saw it happen twice and, and I still was not concerned about it. Yeah. But exactly. That that's my point. And yeah, you know, for our clients, we log in, we do 95% of our work remotely. And, and I tell our clients all the time, if you didn't expect a technician to log in and all of a sudden you see your mouse moving around, then you need to call us. And if, if, if for some reason we didn't reach out to you beforehand, then that's the internal problem that I need to fix. Exactly. I need to make sure that my yeah. people are communicating with your people that we're about to do this. Don't assume yeah. because you've seen us move the mouse around before that it's always us moving the mouse around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, some people they're afraid to do that. You know, uh, for me, we had a client one time that the first time they saw us do that, he's watching and he's like, this is better than dinner theater. <laughs> you know, but a totally non-technical person thinking, hey, you know, I'm getting to watch what these people do, you know. Not- the, the first time I saw this happen, this was back, you might remember this, PC Anywhere mm-hmm. yeah. uh, was the first time I saw this happen. This was back over dial up and, and in, the, in the 90s. But I recall... First of all, looking at it going, this is truly amazing that I can take control of another computer and yet extremely terrifying that I can do this too. (laughs) And uh, of course, VNC has been around for a long time and, you know, it's a free option, but man, this is where RMM tools that let you do things behind the scenes without taking over the computer. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can do things to people's computer and never alert them that I'm doing anything. to Never move the mouse. Yeah. Um, And and this is now I'm I'm making some assumptions here, but this happens a lot where companies say there's a software that allows me to do this. So let's just do it. Exactly. Okay. And, and because the software allows us to do it, then it must be okay. Uh-huh. Uh, or as a frequent, um, well, I wouldn't say frequent, but a recent conversation I've been in, uh, <laughs> this company offers a HIPAA compliant app or solution. And so all we have to do is get the free version and throw it in there and we're good to go. To which I say, the free version typically doesn't cover the BAA, which means it's no. not HIPAA compliant. Did you check that? The answer is no, I didn't know to check that. Yeah. A quick it's check of their website. <laughs> <laughs> of the vendor's website says, no, you have to buy the, the silver or gold plan or whatever to get that. Therefore, the free version you're using, yes, it may work logistically, but it is yeah. illegal to use. <laughs> I know, right? <clears throat> so, I mean, this whole thing is, you know, we later learned that all the computers are Windows 7. 
There was no significant firewall. There was no segmentation between the operating stuff and the industrial systems that run the water supply. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, tons of clearly password sharing going on and weak passwords. And uh, interestingly enough, between the sheriff and the fact that the Massachusetts uh, state, state of Massachusetts, felt like it was important enough, they issued a cybersecurity advisory for all of the public water suppliers in Massachusetts about what had happened. Mm -hmm. You know, that would have gone under the radar if it hadn't been for the sheriff. But here's the other thing is that was happening right outside of Tampa on the Friday before Super Bowl weekend. Hmm. You know, let's just think about that because that's got its thing too. And so, uh, this, uh, the DHS cybersecurity people, uh, they uh, have uh, issued an alert that uh, compromise of U.S. water treatment facility, and they uh, have explanations uh, about, you know, what's wrong with the setup and, you know, what should be done to fix these things, so on and so forth. Um It's a pretty good document. It's a great one to use just for reference. But, you know, these, this small facility, uh, it's no different than a lot of the small businesses that we talk about all the time. Yeah. You know, they're not, not no matter what you see, it's a, uh, a, a, a serious issue of underfunding. Yeah. And sometimes it's underfunded by choice. Yes. So. And uh, I think that Chris Krebs, not the Krebs on security Krebs, but not Chris Krebs, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the former director of the Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA, uh, he wrote a, uh, a article about it, but a quote from the article uh, I thought nailed it where all of that is concerned. Um, unfortunately, the water treatment facility, this situation is the rule rather than the exception. Mm-hmm. Right? When an organization is struggling to make payroll and to keep systems on a generation of technology created in the last decade, and we both know some are even two decades back, uh, even the basics in cybersecurity are often out of reach. That, I mean, that nails it. Yeah. This this is this is not the exception. Well, I wonder when he when he made the comment about an organization struggling to make payroll, is that this company? Is the water supply oh, company struggling I to make mean, payroll? Uh, th- those facilities are underfunded. Mm-hmm. You know that. Th- Everybody talks about where can we cut, not right. what do we need to secure. Those yeah. are two different conversations, and the what do we need secure conversation never happens in the where can we cut conversation. Mm-hmm. They just don't. Yeah, and they and, need to. And, and I wonder what we've been promoting. I wonder in in 2020 when so many people were making cuts, um, how many people cut out. IT and cybersecurity. Well, that's what we like. talked about, you know, in more than one episode. I mean, our mm-hmm. our episode of Who's Watching the Hen House. <laughs> we, <laughs> I just love it because that chicken picture I found. But uh, uh, the, it, it was specifically, we knew at that time, this is happening mm-hmm. and this is what's going on. But this is a much deeper issue if you're looking at all the computers are on windows 7 there's yeah. no cybersecurity in place there's no segmentation in place it's not just something that happened in 2020 oh no no no, no right? this that is... happened that's a long-standing issue yeah and uh, it's across the board with a lot of not just public facilities but private ones oh yeah well it goes into doing your due diligence we talk about this all the time around HIPAA, but even if HIPAA doesn't apply to you, if you're doing business with certain vendors, depending on what level of access they may have 
uh, to your business, you should be asking questions. Right. And you need to ask yeah. questions like, what does your technology look like? What kind type of cybersecurity uh, stuff do you have in place? I mean, there's tons of questions that you should yeah. be asking. Let's just start with, are all of your computers running supported operating systems? Let's just start with that. You may have all to be more specific than that because I think a lot of people still think XP is running and supported. <laughs> They're like, yeah, XP is running and my IT company supports it. There you go. There you go. It is. <laughs> uh, so it, but here are two things that I think that people need to get from this water supply thing mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, review your plans and realize that's happening out there in small companies. It's not just the water company. Like Chris Krebs said, he knows. This is the rule, not the exception to the mm -hmm. rule of a lot of these smaller entities. That's number one, which means uh, you got to review what you're doing to vet vendors that can impact you. And second, behind that is to realize just because they don't have HIPAA access doesn't mean they can't impact you. If you are in an area where the water supply is poisoning people, you will be impacted. <laughs> and clearly there, I mean, Israel offered to help because apparently they had a major attack on their water systems. And this is something that if they can poison the water system and look how easy it was, you know, mm -hmm. just, just to start trying. And, and, oh, don't worry about it. There are all these checks and balances that would have triggered. Okay, well, that check and balance barely worked. If the dude hadn't just watched them do it. And, you know, so. Yeah, once they're in your systems, you know, how can they affect the other checks and balances? Exactly. And, so, and the thing about it is, yeah. is you know, you know, team viewer like I do, and we talked about this a few minutes ago, but I don't think we tied it together. But if they had access through TeamViewer to move the mouse, they also had access through TeamViewer to load code on the back end. So yes. there's no telling what else they may and have pull done. things off. Oh, exactly. So just seeing the mouse move around and, and making this change in the settings, they, they may have been in there all day long doing other stuff before yeah. they did this. Yeah. But when he saw them at 8 a.m., mm -hmm. right, you know, so – but. At any rate, the, the big thing is imagine, take the time in your, uh, particularly if you're like a, uh, a provider, take the time to consider what you would need if all of a sudden everyone in your community is coming to you having been poisoned or your staff is all poisoned and, you know, it, it, and the IT providers, what are you going to do when these things happen? Because it can impact the community in a big way. And if I have to shut down the water supply everywhere and figure out how to treat patients who are seriously in trouble, and what am I going to do? I mean, that is a classic disaster recovery scenario. Mm -hmm. so. No, that's, that's one of those, it'll never happen to me. <laughs> scenarios <laughs> yeah, right yeah yeah okay. well this one thing that i get sometimes when i bring up stuff like this is um we can't plan for everything no. so you know what do you respond to that well i don't want you to plan for everything but i want you to have a plan that if anything happens you could go this ought to work we'll use that plan mm -hmm. right so it's like make a plan for, uh, you know, a tornado to hit. And guess what? You could use that plan if the water supply goes out because now I don't have access to things and I've got people injured everywhere. So I could use that same plan. You don't have to have a plan for everything, but you have to have a plan that would address anything I could pull and use because I want multiple plans so that we have, you know, a different playbook for different scenarios. I need a playbook for malware and that malware might be ransomware. That malware might be some sort of, you know, attack. I need a plan for data theft. 
whether it's an inside or an outside, those are two different things. That's not malware, right? Mm -hmm. I need a plan for a fire, uh, uh, the building to be destroyed or seriously hurt or a problem in the community. That way, no matter what happens, one of those plans that I've decided, one of those plans should apply in most scenarios. So no, don't plan for everything, but have a plan that you should be able to pull something that would work in any scenario. <laughs> don't plan for everything, but please plan for something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. usually the case that when I get people who ask that or say that comment, I'm like, well, what plan, what plans do you have in place? And I'm like, I won't have any. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's start with something. I can't, plan. <laughs> I can't plan for everything. So I'll plan for nothing. Exactly. That's kind of the point I, I see. It's like, we can't do it all. So let's just don't even start. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that always brings to mind, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail mm -hmm. and failure to plan on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I'm going to work with the people that have a plan. Yeah. So, and that's the truth. We, we see that a lot. Out, I did save one last supply chain thing. Okay. Just to bring home, bring home, bring it back around. Tiny, tiny. These things can be another announcement this week, a Chrome's uh, extension. We'll plug in for Chrome called the great suspender. I mean, it's huge. It's been around for a long time. And people have used it, no problemo. But it came out this week that the guy who originally wrote it sold it to somebody else who then used it for nefarious means. <sighs> yeah. Very simple. It's not a complicated extension, but it started doing track, uh, introduced tracking and malicious code. Two million users. Mm. So that something that simple that had been fine for years but a new company comes in and you and i just talked about what happens when a company you really counted on somebody came came in and uh, they merged they were sold there's new management the you know the people that made things run smoothly are no longer there mm -hmm. these things happen and you don't even know i mean nobody that used the great suspender had any idea that somebody else was wearing the suspenders. And here's a more uh, concerning thought for us as IT providers is we can, we can block the installation of software. We cannot block the installation of extensions. Yeah. They, I mean, there's some controls that using a, like Google has a enterprise something something policy crumb but it's not simple straightforward stuff mm -mm. Or, it or is probably not should, that easy i probably should correct myself and say not say we can't do it it's not by default something that yeah. most security platforms most do. do you'd have to specifically yeah. say i want this to happen so yeah. just say it that way um so what i'm saying is don't don't think because your it company has security there uh they can block you from installing things and all that. This this installs a very different way. Yeah. And you know, you you've, you've like got two clicks. Yeah. And you've got employees that may say, hey, I use this thing at home. And so I, I can just add this extension and use it at work. You wouldn't even know it doesn't put an icon on your desktop or anything like that. You've got to yeah. you've got to look well, at those things. Yeah. And this particular one is used because what it does is it suspends the memory use of the tab. Uh, so a lot of people would use it on a computer that didn't have a lot of memory. The Windows and 7 machines? Were, uh, <laughs> yeah. Windows 7 machines <laughs> at a water uh, but, supply company? <laughs> but if you needed the tab open and you weren't using it, it would just suspend it. And then when you would go back to it, it would open it back up and put it back in memory. That's why it was the great suspender. Mm -hmm. um, but I have so many times had those conversations with developers and they're politely nodding their head that grandma's telling them something <laughs> uh, that they need to be addressing. But I'm telling you, now is the time to get your ducks in a row with using open source and third party software within your development, whether it's the development tools, whether it's code libraries, just even little snippets of code today, you know. 
it, it, there's just so many ways that that could, you have to put an approval process and a code review process in place today. You don't have a choice. Yeah. So there you go. And unfortunately you're going to have employees because I run across them. <laughs> <laughs> they want to accomplish a task. Yep. They don't care about anything else, but accomplishing that task. Mm -hmm. They are not going to jump through your security hoops. They don't care about your policies. They don't care about your procedures. They have a task they need to get done and whatever they have to do to get it done is what they're going to do. And yeah. that's what you got to fight against. Yeah. And just know, I mean, it wasn't the solar winds developers that caused the problem, but something was injected into the coding process by a hacker who got into the coding process. Mm -hmm. And that's how it got in. And that's why all of these things matter so much. It is, we, again, cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility. So to assume you have such a minor impact, no matter what you do, uh, you know, d did the person sitting there uh, watching the mouse move around really understand the responsibility to protect everyone in that community? I don't think so. Mm-mm. There you have it. All righty. Good deal. A lot to think about. Indeed. As always. All right, yes. folks. Remember to follow, share us out on your favorite social media site. Check out our podcasting app. Shoot, check out our website. It's been rebuilt. What, what? Hey, yeah. What, what? <laughs> Looks yeah. good. It's purdy. <laughs> uh, if you find any problems with it, let, let us know so I can fix it. Anyway. Make sure you let David know, not yeah. me. Let me know. Don't tell Donna because I know I'll have to hear about it. Yep. <laughs> All right, so Donna and myself, remember, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care.